in the global world you need global politics and politicians at that level in those institutions are important. Uh, to be an MEP in 79 was, it was, a, <laughs> it was a unique experience. It was, a, it was a big privilege, yes. Yes, it was. Um, uh, I felt being, being the first elected one was, was really fascinating. Well, that's very interesting. Coming from Hull, you wouldn't think there'd be an argument. Being Cod Wars before, but I took the view as the only one of the three MPs in Hull that it was hypocrisy for Britain to claim the rights of a continental shelf for oil exploration as we had done and then say to Iceland, heavily dependent upon its fish resources on its continental shelf, that no, it's now, it belongs to us and you can't do it, extend to 75 uh, miles. So when it broke down between uh, Callaghan, I think, and um, Wilson, I went to Iceland. I could have only gone to Iceland because I went by Luxembourg and that was because I was in the European Assembly. And then I went and I met the Prime Minister, I met all the ministers, I came back with the deal. It was less fish but no war continuing a from her. I get home, the Prime Minister of Iceland rings me and says, uh, we agree with the Prescott deal. Well somebody told that to Callaghan who went barmy who then publicly denounced me, told the NATO countries there's no such thing as a Prescott deal, which did eventually become the Prescott deal, but I couldn't have done that without being in the European Parliament. Well, I was pretty pleased to actually win Lincolnshire for the Labour Party because it certainly wasn't a, 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 a done deal by it by any means I got um, I was also the only woman on a short list of six but I um, and I got the nomination in the first place uh, and then worked extremely hard for over a number of months every weekend going to some town around the constituency working with local party members and I think it was the first time they'd had a real campaign in Lincolnshire for the, from the Labour Party, uh, certainly at European level. I mean obviously 1979 and into, into that Parliament and we were all on our various committees, I was very privileged to serve with Jacques Delors on the Economic and Money Committee, which was really the industrial, the industrial committee of that, and the commissioner at that time was uh, De Vignon. and we in in this area in South Yorkshire having a, a, a difficult time uh, within the steel industry. The guy who did actually recognise that was De Vignon, the commissioner, and we were able to do certain things uh, by uh, bringing uh, uh, the commissioner De Vignon over to Sheffield, to South Yorkshire and to see how we could work the industrial strategy of, the, of, of Europe uh, and the, the, uh, the, the European Union in a more effective way uh, for the industry here uh, in the UK and particularly in South Yorkshire. Well, I was very proud of the, uh, of the money I managed to get from the uh, Commission in, in, in the early days because uh, we could go talk to the Commission and persuade them to give grants, uh, which Mrs Thatcher then stopped when, uh, when she found there was a lot of money going to places that she didn't know about. And one of the, um, the most important ones was for the Alhambra Theatre in Bradford to get it extended. We've got, uh, uh, got a couple of million pounds for that. And uh, that, that was satisfying. So much so that uh, Jack Delore was, was then a, uh, uh, well, President of the Commission came over to open the Alhambra uh, renovation uh, and uh, I, I took him to see Bradford City as well, which he enjoyed. So, so that, was, that was a proud achievement, yeah. I was a member of the Development Committee for my 15 years in the European Parliament and I became President after two and a half years. It was the first UK President of the Development Committee. I'm very pleased now that Linda McCavan is actually the President of the Development Committee. Uh, it was at the time of apartheid in South Africa and we actually, the Development Committee, initiated a budget line to support victims of apartheid in South Africa that was distributed not through government but through education trusts, through the trade 
unions, through independent radio and newspapers, and a special trust based in, based in, uh, in, in Johannesburg. I'd come from a community that had shown great solidarity internationally. We know that it was the courage of the people in South Africa, but it was important that international solidarity supported their, their, their commitment. Well, the World Student Games, which is like the uh, Olympics for the students of the world, uh, we decided that we would be hosting them in Sheffield in 1991, which was quite a controversial uh, decision, as you might imagine. And I went to the European Parliament and said the Parliament ought to be supporting what Sheffield's trying to do, um, getting the students of the, you know, the decision makers of the future uh, together. Uh, in sport uh, and I won a proposal to donate one million pounds to help Sheffield to make a great success of them. So I was very pleased to be offered the chance to write the opinion of the Agriculture Committee on the, re um, the revision of uh, food policy and I was able to bring together a lot of the things I was interested in, like um, ensuring that there was no overuse of pesticides and herbicides and insecticides, uh, to ensure that crops would be as healthy as possible for, for consumers. Also that animals should be looked after in good conditions and they should not be fed antibiotics as a matter of routine. And I was very pleased with all the things that I recommended were actually accepted by the committee. We got elected in 97 and we became the president of Europe. The, the country has presidencies over every six months. so. Gore rang Tony Blair and said, look, I'm a bit worried about this agreement in Kyoto. Have you got some tough negotiator you can send over there? And he said, well, I've got this fellow from the trade unions. And that was me. So I was sent immediately over to Europe, uh, to Japan, and I started the negotiations. And because we were in the presidency, I directed the control of it. And we would not have got Kyoto, which is an essential contribution on environment, without actually being in Europe. We certainly have a record that we can be proud of. There's also something I was involved with, making the European Union more transparent and more democratic and more accountable. When this parliament was first elected back in 1979, it was an advisory parliament. We have fought over the years to make sure that nowadays no European legislation can be adopted without the approval of your elected parliament in Europe. That's something that will survive whether or not we go ahead with Brexit. It's yet another contribution that we British and British Labour MEPs in particular have made to the development of the European Union. Last but not least, I'm very proud of the work that we've done on fair trade. Um, I set up the European Parliament's first fair trade group back in 2004. And since then, from a very low start, we've seen a huge step change in the support of the European Union for fair trade organisations, both in, in our own countries and in the global south. And I'm very, very proud that Yorkshire is, the, is Britain's first fair trade region. Yorkshire's leading the way on fair trade, and that's a real legacy, something I'm very proud of. You know, when I reflect back on it, I was incredibly privileged to, to have been part of it. There's no doubts about that. It was really been working in an international environment I found very stimulating and helping to promote not only European cooperation, but international cooperation. So, yes. If you did the job and it's well worth doing, you got on with it. That was for me. I enjoyed it. I've been lucky in my life to have do things I enjoy, and I certainly enjoyed the European part. I always said it was the finest job in the world, and I was very fortunate to have it for ten years. And when we look at all the things, there are so many that, that we've done over the last forty years. Me and Richard, and the colleagues who came before us. Um, of course, we see that on the, there's an imprint of labour values on many of the things that we've managed to do. And none of that would have been possible without you, because you 
selected us, helped us get elected to the European Parliament. And so the real big thank you is to all of you for everything you've done to support our work over all these years. Thank you.